In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, you alone we worship and you alone we ask for help. To all of you who have received the award, I congratulate you all. And I thank the organizer very much because thanks are given with great difficulty in our country. Every morning, the sun gives us light, we don't say thanks. Our elders gave us birth, we don't say thanks. Our teachers are with us, we don't say thanks. So to all of you, thank you so much for organizing this event. I would request all of you to give the organizers a round of applause. I am a technologist. I ran away from school. I did not study much, nor did I send my children to school. The reason was that I believed schools were not fulfilling their purpose in our country. So, according to Iqbal, we taught them the lessons of truth, justice, and courage so that they may lead the world. The same school I made for my children at home, I have now replicated in Karachi as an AI and internet first school. What does it mean? This means that we are experimenting with the education that should be there after the advent of AI and the internet. 200 years ago, strength was considered to be physical power. Then we had the industrial era, the power shifted to industry. We had the information era. And again, power shifted to information. Just one year ago, all the information that mankind has preserved and stored, its value has become zero. After the arrival of artificial intelligence, ChatGPT and platforms like these, efforts that we put in road learning for so many years have perished. Nokia, the company that put mobiles in people's hands, its CEO when leaving the company said that we didn't do anything wrong, but times have changed. And today, the same has happened again. That none of us are doing this intentionally, but this realization has slipped our minds that times have changed. We did not have this toy 10 years ago. In our country today, there are 150 million smartphones. We get unlimited in internet for $5 a month, but we are not able to take advantage of it. We are building buildings upon buildings, building upon buildings. And the knowledge of the world is in our hands, but we are not able to take advantage of it. That is why we have not kept any teachers in our school. We call them facilitators, whose job is to bring the children to the class. And even today, 75 years later, our gutters are flooded. There is no water, no electricity, no solar, no gas. So we have given our children the name that, son, you have to put your 20 years into this work. You will fix the electricity problem. You will fix the gas problem like Edi Sahab did, like Jinnah Sahab did, like other people who solved the problem. Now you have to become the next Greta Thunberg, Malala and such people. Here we don't teach them science, English, chemistry, biology, anything. First, we remove their fears, make them friends with snakes, computers and mobile phones. Their parent thinks that their mobile is such a piece of evil that God forbid their religion will be in danger. For the first year, our principal used to tell us with great enthusiasm that he used to cut schools' internet connection, cutting off electricity and delete videos from computers because he thought a bad person had opened the school. Coincidentally, we got the school in Ibrahim Hydri. So now I would like to invite you all to come there. There you will find the water walas, the electricity walas. There you will find small children who are studying to solve these problems. The way we teach is the world's best. We have four subjects. One, we show TED Talk daily. Second, we teach them to do interviews and to have conversations. The man who is being called to speak on the stage at the age of 35 could not make eye contact with anyone because no one taught him how to do conversation. Third, we teach them how to make videos using AI tools. 
Fourth, we teach them how to do yoga, meditation, and prayer, namaz. This is our total curriculum. Every kid is required to watch a TED talk on the subject they are assigned. If he is a waterwala, he will watch a TED talk about water issues. After watching a TED talk, he will make a video of his understanding and learning and will post it on his social media handles and tag the author who delivered that talk on TEDx platform just to tell them that today I saw your TED video. Our goal is for the child to have completed 250 interviews by the sixth grade. And you will be seeing them more often on social media and becoming the next Rehan Alawala. The second big problem is our country's economy. Our last prime minister proudly announced that he has brought two billion dollars more. I feel very bad to hear this. I met some army men and they said the prime minister will be elected on the basis that he begs well. I don't want a prime minister who is a beggar. I don't want to live in a country where people beg. Our country is unnecessarily poor. We have everything in the world. 250 million smart people are present. But our country's per capita income is a thousand dollars a year. The world's per capita income is 10,400 US dollars a year. Singapore's per capita income is $55,000 a year. Luxembourg's per capita income is 112,000 USD a year. We are 112 times behind Luxembourg, 55 times behind Singapore, and 10 times behind the world. Why are we behind? I don't see any reason. I am working to resolve the problems I see as the reason. I understand that Kashmir is a huge issue for us, but I don't see a man who says that I work day and night for the Kashmir cause. My name is Kashmir Wala. I didn't know a Palestinian until now, so uh, we have finally built a room like the United Nations in our school. There, the children only study peacemaking. They don't study anything else. The issue of Palestine and Kashmir, our children will solve it for you. Iqbal is the founder of this country, but we have not yet freed our people from slavery. We still think that the people of the O level will come and teach us. We think that the people of the upper level will come and teach us. I have taken a very far-fetched measure from all the educationists for the last two years. I do not want any of the educationists to come and tell us what we are doing wrong in the new system that we are going to build. I request you all to please come. Two kids are sitting here. I request all of you that these young are the most intelligent in IT than you. He has been with us in school for just one year. And the girl on the left has interviewed 350 people. And 150 of them were Englishmen. Two of those Englishmen came to Pakistan to see our school, to experience what are we doing? How can they be children? They may be some puzzle with their language. I invite all of you to contact them. Give them an interview, give them your knowledge. Don't force them, but request them, ask them. The sayings of Hazrat Ali and Aristotle are similar in that real knowledge is asking questions. Today, after the arrival of ChatGPT and Annie, our biggest and most important work is to ask them questions. This is Annie. She replies to the questions in every language of the world. Whether you talk to her in, in Urdu, Sindhi, Pashto, Gujarati, or Farsi, whatever you speak, it speaks to you. It's free. It's free. You just have to install it on your phone. You have a dinosaur in your pocket right now. A jinn sitting there that can solve all your problems. The next thing is knowledge, that is action. As Iqbal said, life becomes heaven and or hell based on actions. Now is the time for action. We have to take action because we know. We don't know how to extract the treasures from the ocean of knowledge. We are trying to teach that. I will invite you all again. Our campus is in Korangi.
It is open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. No classroom looks like a classroom. The entrance room there looks like a spaceship. So you can think that we will take you in the future, inshallah. Again, congratulations to all of you. I am very thankful that you gave me the opportunity. I have just come back from flying so that I can talk to you. All of you are my teachers. I love all of you. You have dedicated your lives to this work. Now, I request you to give this country freedom from poverty. We are tired of this. How long will we be humiliated? I have 27 international visa rejections. There is only one reason. That's my green passport. I have money, respect, everything. But the humiliation that I have to face, I don't want my children to enter that future. I am sure that you don't want our children to enter that future. And you're all doing a great job, but, but just one thing. The world has changed. The world has changed. If you don't change, then how many good numbers you can bring? Those are numbers of memory, maybe not the numbers of knowledge. If there is knowledge, you know that in our country, 22 billion rupees of ginger have been imported. Tears of blood come out that if you go to a university, 450 people have done PhDs. But ginger and garlic have been imported for 12 billion rupees. So these are painful things, difficult. I will say again, you must come. Please contact our children. Please come to enjoy and take nothing from there. We've made a nice coffee shop there. Please come and have it with our children. Thank you so much. Pakistan Zindabad. If my words hurt you, I am ready to be punished.